Hey, what's up, everybody, and uh, happy Friday. Hope everybody's ready for the weekend, and what better way to kick things off than with some exciting game news. Sounds like there's a pretty major game that's in development over at PlayStation, and let's just say that there's a pretty good chance that Dad of War will be returning for at least one more game, or... Could this actually be a completely different game than what fans are currently speculating? Well, we are going to dive into that one today. And then also, did a big Nintendo Switch 2 game just officially get teased? Well, according to some fan speculation out there, that might just be the case. To get things started off though, let's go and talk about a new game that just released for the Nintendo Switch and PC, being Bomb Rush Cyberfunk. There's been a lot of excitement for this game since it was first announced as a Jet Set Radio spiritual successor. And I am happy to say that right now it appears to be meeting its expectations. Currently on Steam has a 98% approval rating, which is always a good sign. And after seeing some of its footage today, it really does look great. The gameplay, the grinding, the wall riding, it all just looks like a ton of fun. And the music is just a vibe. Now, I do understand that the last few months have been pretty stacked with good, high-quality games. And, you know, it's, it's kind of hard to keep up. But it's really looking like Bomb Rush Cyberfunk can now be added to that list as well. If anything else, it might go down as one of the best independent games of the year. And if you are looking for a game to play over the weekend... Maybe go ahead and consider picking it up. It's $40, and I'm also hearing that it runs great on the Steam Deck and the ROG Ally. It's actually probably where I'm going to play it myself, though. Do keep in mind that it's also set to release for PlayStation and Xbox on September 1st. In the meantime, it sounds like Bomb Rush Cyber Funk is the Jet Set Radio 3 that fans have craved for years and years. Now, speaking of adding games to the list, though, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 is the latest blockbuster to get a gameplay premiere at Gamescom. Of course, yesterday, Activision revealed its single-player campaign, which looks impressive, honestly, but it also sounds like we might get a deeper dive at Gamescom, which actually makes a lot of sense. Jeff Keighley has partnered up with Activision in the past to reveal Call of Duty games at his showcases, and... Modern Warfare 3 will continue on with that trend. I imagine with some of the other reveals that they've made together, this will focus on a single player segment with a lengthy amount of gameplay. I mean, that's just a guess on my part. It could also be its multiplayer reveal. Modern Warfare 3 does have a revamped movement system, and I, I know a lot of fans are curious about that, so they could maybe go in that direction as well. Uh, either which way, though, Gamescom continues to get these big games. It now has Alan Wake 2, Stalker 2, Mortal Kombat 1, Wukong, and now what possibly could be the best-selling game of the year, Modern Warfare 3. So there's plenty of reasons to tune into that Gamescom opening night live event next week on August 22nd. It has a little bit of something for everybody, and I imagine this is just a small portion of what will be there. Now, let's go and talk about one of PlayStation's most renowned franchises, God of War. And with Ragnarok now in the rearview mirror, some fans might be wondering what's next for the God of War series. I think with how that game ended, it's pretty obvious that its story is, it's still not over. There's still a lot of things that they could tell in its world, and with a growing cast of characters, there's really several paths that they could take. God of War as a series is now open to change itself, like we saw from God of War 1 through 3 to God of War 2018 and Ragnarok. It went from Greek mythology to Norse mythology. But what exactly is next for this series, and Will they take a break before coming back, much like we saw from God of War 3 to God of War 2018? Well, from some new Sony Santa Monica job listings discovered, it doesn't sound like the series is going to take a break this time around. In one job advertisement for a combat designer, one of the requirements said this, must have knowledge of God of War 2018 and God of War Ragnarok 2022 and be able to speak in depth about the combat systems, mechanics, and enemies. So, yeah, I'd say that that's a pretty good sign that they're doing something God of War related, and uh, whatever it is, it's in development as we speak. There's also other positions that requires the same thing, and reportedly a listing like this was also spotted earlier in 2023. So whatever they're working on might have been in development for a while. But that right there is kind of the thing. Is what they're referring to an actual sequel 
as so many are speculating, or instead is this in reference to something else? Could it possibly be some type of an expansion for God of War Ragnarok? Now, God of War has never received any type of major DLC in the past, so to me that seems a little unlikely, but there is one other possibility that crossed my mind. One thing that Sony has experimented with and have had great success with are smaller scope games that focuses on different characters with their popular IP. Games like Uncharted The Lost Legacy and Spider-Man Miles Morales. Both of those games also had success. So what's to say that they couldn't do something similar with one of their flagship franchises, God of War? I mean... One benefit of these type of games is that they can push these smaller scope games out at a quicker pace than a full-blown sequel, which might take years and years and years. And they do tide fans over in the meantime by expanding its universe and characters. In fact, I think in God of War's case, there's already a side story that could be set up for a completely new game between Atreus and Sentry. Now, I won't get into the exact reasons as to why for spoiler-related reasons, but there are some unresolved issues by the end of God of War Ragnarok. So I kind of wonder if maybe they do a spinoff or a smaller scope game that focuses on that story. I mean, with Kratos' next mainline game, that could very well be set in a completely different region, maybe Egypt or Japan, but Atreus' story, however... That still isn't over, so how do they complete his side of the story before moving on to a completely different mythology, assuming that's what they're going to do with Kratos? Now, I'm just spitballing right now, but, I mean, if it happens, you heard it here first. And truthfully, I think that that would make for an enticing game. I think a lot of people would be interested in a spinoff like that. Atreus proved to be a fun character in Ragnarok. He, his combat actually works pretty well, and uh, that part of the story between him and Sindri is interesting enough that they could make a game out of it. Uh, there's also another character that could fight alongside Atreus again. I, again, I'm trying to be careful for spoiler-related reasons, uh, but nonetheless, these job listings do indicate at least one thing. More God of War is absolutely on the way, and it sounds like there's not going to be a big gap this time around. In the meantime, though, let me know what you all think about all this. Would you like a spinoff based on Atreus? And uh, what about Kratos' next adventure? What challenge would you like to see him take next? Moving on, though, let's go and talk about the Embracer Group and an interesting promise uh, that they made regarding Dead Island 2. So while talking about the performance of the long, long-awaited Dead Island 2 in their quarterly report, the CEO said this. I think Dead Island had a really strong release window than we've been seeing more normal performance according to expectations. So I'd say that that alone is great for Dead Island fans. Uh, maybe in another 10 years we'll get a third game, who knows? But continuing on with what he said, what we now expect obviously is promotions, but primarily the addition of new content coming through. So there is a significant amount of content coming through for the game and the year that would improve the sales of the base game as well. Again, that's more good news for fans of Dead Island 2. But here's the part that's catching so much attention online. He goes on to say, Then looking a year ahead, we would have a release on another platform that will also drive multiple cells. Now, he doesn't go into any type of detail about what platform he's talking about, but... I mean, there's really only so many platforms on the market. I mean, right now, Dead Island 2 is available on Xbox, PlayStation, and PC via the Epic Game Store. So the two immediate platforms that you would think of is the Nintendo Switch and Steam. Now, I personally think Steam is a no-brainer. I imagine at the bare minimum, he's at least referring to a Steam version. But there's also another possibility here. Considering he mentioned this will happen a year from now, well, the Nintendo Switch successor is also slated to be right around that time frame. And with a power boost, there is a very good chance that it would be capable of running Dead Island 2. I mean, this game can already run on both the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4, so, you know, if the Switch 2 has similar power to those platforms as is speculated, then a Dead Island 2 port would make perfect sense. For that matter, that could be a big launch game for the Embracer group. It, it's a fun zombie game, and it, it could, in a way, showcase what the Switch 2 is capable of. I think it would make for a great Switch 2 launch game. Still, though, he might only be referring to Steam. That wouldn't really surprise me either. Again, I think that Steam is a no-brainer. Uh, but I, I think this rumor is part of the reason as to why the Switch successor is just so exciting. It really opens the door for some of these big AAA third-party games that does require that extra graphical power. 
I've said this before, but the idea of a Nintendo handheld running games that looks similar visually to the PlayStation 4, that is incredibly exciting. I mean, if you go back and look at some of the games that released last generation, those consoles are more than capable. Games like God of War, The Last of Us Part 2, you have Red Dead Redemption 2, I mean, that game looks stunning on the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4. So if the Switch 2 has that type of power, but is a handheld, yeah, that is pretty exciting. And it opens up the door for a lot of third-party support. Now, we do have one last topic to go over here, and uh, this one is kind of a strange one. Uh, the Walking Dead is getting a new game dubbed The Walking Dead Destinies. And the idea is actually pretty solid on paper. The way this game works is that it takes place during the first four seasons of the AMC show, which honestly, I'd say is probably the best seasons. I always felt that the show got worse with each passing season, but it, it did have a strong start, in my opinion, as one of the reasons that it was so popular in the first place. The cool thing about this game, though, is that in Destinies, you choose how the story plays out. You can rewrite the story by changing pivotal moments. Instead of making Rick Grimes the leader of the group, you can actually choose Shane instead. Now, I'm sure there's some other pivotal moments that you can change throughout a story. You can kind of let your mind uh, run wild with that. Uh, but I do think the idea is pretty cool for fans of the series. In a way, you can almost view this as a way to fix its story depending on what you think about the show and some of the decisions that they made on there. The only problem I would say about this game though right now is that when you see the visuals of Destinies, it looks a little rough around the edges. It's apparently being developed by Flux Games and published by Game Mill Entertainment. Now, I had to actually look up Flux Games because I really wasn't aware of who they were, but apparently this is the studio behind Cobra Kai, The Karate Kid Saga Continues, which has a 67 overall score on Metacritic. Now, you can kind of take that as you will, but again, I do like the idea of this game. I think that it sounds solid on paper, uh, and it's at the very least worth paying attention to. The Walking Dead Destinies will release for PlayStation, Xbox, the Nintendo Switch, and PC for $50, and is currently rumored for a November release, but nothing official on that just yet. I will keep you all updated as we hear more. Let's go take a look at the poll of the day, though. We're asked you, well, does the Xbox 360 store closure bother you, considering their efforts for the Xbox One and Xbox Series backwards compatibility? And, uh, yeah, the vast majority of you will have no qualms with its closure, and I I'm with you all on this one. Microsoft was very well prepared because of their backwards compatibility efforts. Now, they've not been able to transition every single game from the Xbox 360 to the modern platforms, so the store closure is still important to keep an eye on just in case there are any digital-only games that you want, but most of the big games are supported on the Xbox One and the Xbox Series. Uh, better yet is that the Xbox Series X offers enhanced versions with things like HDR and better resolution. So not only can you go back and play old games like Lost Odyssey and Blue Dragon, by the way, I highly recommend those, but if you play those on the Xbox series, they look even better than they did back then. So yeah, Xbox has done a phenomenal, phenomenal job with their back compat games. They really are the leading example of what you should do with your legacy platforms. Microsoft has attempted to bring those platforms into the future via backwards compatibility and with included enhancements. Anyways, though, that's it for this episode, but if you liked the video, don't forget to bell notification and subscribe button for more content just like this. Also, if you'd like to support the channel through Patreon, thank you for making this content possible. Peace out.